Today's lesson is Christmas in the North and South. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show. I'm Roger. And my name is Helen. And guess what? Today is Christmas, December twenty fifth. Merry Christmas, everybody! And we're all glad to have you here with us, even though you'd rather be home sleeping. Right. Merry Christmas to you, Roger. And I have to say, this is indeed a fine day. It's an important day. No matter where you are, for many people, and there are different ways of celebrating Christmas. Indeed, and here we're trying to talk about Christmas in the North and South, and we're not specifically referring to the North of Taiwan, like how they celebrate Christmas in Taipei and Geelong, versus how they celebrate Christmas in Pingdong and Gaoshang. No, we're actually talking about North and South. In the world, how people in the northern hemisphere celebrate Christmas, and how people in the southern hemisphere celebrate Christmas, and yeah, the seasons are different. You know, here it's winter, but in Australia it's summer. So yeah, of course they're going to have different ways to celebrate Christmas. Right. You might think that a particular holiday would be celebrated the same way no matter where you are, because it has to do with the tradition. For instance, Halloween, people dress up in costumes and go trick or treating, and that should be the same everywhere. But actually, holidays are celebrated very differently from one place to another, depending on where you are and depending on the weather of that particular place. So that's the subject of today's lesson: the differences in how Christmas is celebrated in the North. And south parts of the world. So let's get to it here. Let's、uh, read through the first part of our lesson and talk about what we think about when we think about Christmas. Christmas in the North and South. What images come to mind when you think of Christmas? If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, where Christmas falls in the winter. You might think of Santa Claus driving his sleigh over frost-capped trees, or people sipping hot chocolate next to an open fire. But for those living in the Southern Hemisphere, where Christmas falls in the summer, it's a whole different story. Let's take a look at how Christmas is celebrated on either side of the equator. 大家好，第一部分我们看到名词 hemisphere， 指地球的半球，像是 In the southern hemisphere, winter takes place from June through August. 在南半球，冬天是六月到八月。或是 My cousin lives in Australia, which is located in the southern hemisphere. 我的表哥住在位于南半球的澳洲。再来，我们看到单字 equator 这个字是名词，意思是赤道。像是 If you live close to the equator, the temperature is pretty much the same year round. 若你住在离赤道很近的地方。一整年几乎都是差不多的温度，或是 countries near the equator mostly would have hot climate. 赤道附近的国家通常会有炎热的气候。And welcome back. Today's lesson is Christmas in the North and South. What images come to mind when you think of Christmas? If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, where Christmas falls in the winter, you might think of Santa Claus driving his sleigh over frost-capped trees or people sipping hot chocolate next to an open fire. Now that is a very complete scene. It's a very classic scene, also. So this is what would come to mind if you lived in the northern hemisphere. Now, first of all, if something comes to mind, you suddenly start thinking about it. Now, another version of this expression is to spring to mind. So I could say, for instance. Is there something in particular that you want for Christmas? And the reply could be, Nope, nothing in particular comes to mind. Yep, I can't think of anything. Years ago, I worked for a publisher, and it was a magazine publishing company, and they asked me, "Gee, Roger, why are our subscribers going down in number? Do you have any ideas? Why are we losing subscribers?" And I said, "Well, nothing comes to mind. I have no idea. Maybe it's the content of the magazine." Maybe demographics are changing. Who knows? But yeah, nothing came to mind. I couldn't think of anything. So yeah, when somebody says the word Christmas, what do you think of? What images come to mind when someone says Christmas? If you live in the northern hemisphere, like Russia or Canada. 
Canada, the USA, the UK, or whatever. Christmas, of course, falls in the winter, and you might think of jolly old Saint Nick. Santa Claus, and he's going to be driving his sleigh over frost-capped trees, or you might think of people sipping hot chocolate next to an open fire. Okay, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Indeed, that might be an image of Christmas that you might have. So yeah, we've got that big fat white guy in a beard and a big red suit, and he's flying in a sleigh. Which is some kind of vehicle that is used to go over snow, right? Right. A sleigh is an open vehicle, and it has no wheels, and it's usually pulled along by animals for traveling over snow. So the typical image is Santa Claus traveling on his sleigh, being pulled by reindeers, and that is the typical image of Christmas. So, for instance, I could say the sleigh was pulled by a pack of dogs because you don't necessarily have to have reindeer pulling a sleigh. So that is a particular image. Image and also another image of Christmas that's related is the image of frost-capped trees. Yeah, trees, especially pine trees or fir trees, and they're going to have snow on top of them. So here we've got frost-capped as an adjective, and that's just describing trees that have、uh, snow or frost on top of them. Frost is basically frozen water that's different from snow, but yeah, you'll have frost on the top of those trees. That is an image that might come to mind when you think of Christmas. I did also want to say that the word. Sleigh is sometimes、uh, referred to as a sledge. You might hear that word as well. And then kids often use a sled, S L E D, to slide down a hill. But in this particular case, a sleigh is much larger for Santa Claus and for all those presents that he has to carry. So these are some images that might come to mind. Or you might have the image of people sipping hot chocolate next to an open fire. Which would basically be a campfire, a fire outside that people will start to sit around and to sing songs and to tell ghost stories and stuff like that. That's right. So they might be sipping hot chocolate or eggnog. That's another typical drink that people drink for Christmas. So these are the. Images of Christmas if you're in the northern hemisphere, but for those living in the southern hemisphere where Christmas falls in the summer, it's a whole different story. So a whole different story means it's just completely different. It's not at all the same as what came before. So I could say, for instance, we had fun on the first day of our holiday, but the second day was a whole different story. It was a different story because we didn't have fun at all.、Mm-hmm. That's a whole different story. You might also say, well, that's a whole different topic. If somebody starts talking about something that's not related to the subject at hand, you could say, well, that's a totally different story, or that's something else. We can talk about that some other time. So yeah, we've got lots of places in the world that are in the southern. Hemisphere. Most of the world's land mass is in the northern hemisphere, but still there are certain parts of the world that are south of the equator. So yeah, let's take a look at how Christmas is celebrated on either side of the equator. Again, the equator is an imaginary line that goes through the middle of the Earth. Okay, and、uh, the equator goes through Ecuador and it passes close to Singapore. It goes through the middle of Africa. You get the idea. That's right. It's the line, the imaginary line that divides the world into the northern and the southern hemispheres. That's how we get the two hemispheres. We get it from the equator, which separates the north and the south. Indeed. So let's move on now to the next part of our lesson and talk about differences in Christmas between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. In North America, as well as in parts of Europe, the centerpiece of Christmas is the Christmas tree, which is typically a pine, spruce, or fir. Freshly cut and placed in the home, they symbolize Christmas not only for their appearance but also for their piney scent. Likewise, Christmas trees embody the holiday spirit in the southern hemisphere too, but instead of conifers, other types of tree are used. For instance, New Zealanders consider the Pahutakawa tree, with its flaming red blossoms and pointy petals, as their Christmas tree. Found mainly on the North Island, the Pahutakawa is often featured on Christmas cards and has been described as having a scent of oranges.
第二部分，我们看到动词 symbolize， 意思是象征、代表。例如 ，Big Ben is often used to symbolize the United Kingdom. 大笨钟常常被用来作为英国的象征。或是 ，For many, the Gucci brand symbolizes luxury. 对许多人来说 ，Gucci 这个品牌代表奢华。另外，补充一个相关片语 stand for， 有以下几种用法。第一，有代表、象征的意思。举例来说。To most Americans, the U.S. flag stands for justice and freedom for all people. 对多数美国人来说，美国国旗代表赋予全体人民的正义与自由。第二，表示支持、拥护，像是 The group stands for the rights of women around the world. 那个团体支持全世界各地的女权运动。第三，表示容忍，像是 Our teacher told us on the first day of school that she wouldn't stand for bad behavior. 我们的老师在开学第一天告诉我们，他不会容忍不良行为。再来，我们看到一个单字 embody， 这个字是动词，指表现、体现。像是 the musical work embodies the style and spirit of the Baroque period。这个音乐作品具体展现了巴洛克时期的风格与精神。或是 the Eiffel Tower embodies the spirit of Parisians。埃菲尔铁塔体现了巴黎人的精神。另外，补充这个字的名词 embodiment, e m b o d i m e n t, embodiment 意思是具体象征。举例来说 ，According to his employees, Jeff is the embodiment of an ideal boss. 根据他的职员所说 ，Jeff 是理想老板的具体象征。最后，我们看到单字 petal 这个字是名词，意思是花瓣，像是 The flower's petals have fallen to the ground. 那些花的花瓣掉到地上了。And welcome back. So we're going to start off by looking at Christmas traditions, images of Christmas in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, first off, in North America as well as in parts of Europe, the centerpiece of Christmas is the Christmas tree, which is typically a pine. Spruce or fir. So, what comes to mind when you think of Christmas, especially the version that's celebrated in North America? You think of the Christmas tree. Now, you can't use any type of tree for your Christmas tree. It has to be a particular type. And usually, people use pine, spruce, or fir. These are the three most popular trees that exist in North America or in the northern parts of Europe that are used for Christmas trees. Yeah, they're kind of conical or triangular in shape, so they're. Pretty suitable to be Christmas trees, pine trees, spruce and fir. I think that's similar to pine trees. And freshly cut and placed in the home, they symbolize Christmas not only for their appearance but also for their piney scent. Ah,、uh, yeah, I do remember the smell of the Christmas tree in the living room. Indeed, that smell is important. The smell of pine or pine trees; those trees have a piney scent. So again, these trees will be freshly cut, unless you're using an artificial tree. But、uh, if you're using a real tree, they'll be freshly cut down, and then you place them in the home somewhere, usually in the living room or wherever. And they symbolize Christmas not only because of what they look like, but also because of what they smell like. So here we've got the word symbolize. That just means it sort of stands. Stands for something. It's an image associated with something. So freshly cut trees symbolize Christmas, or they represent Christmas because of the way they look and also the way they smell. And if you're curious about what a piney scent is, you can. Probably find that particular scent in many air fresheners for cars. They offer air fresheners for cars in particular in the scent of pine and lemon and other scents. But in any case, so likewise, Christmas trees embody the holiday spirit in the southern hemisphere too. So don't think that the Christmas tree exists only in the northern hemisphere because only the north, northern part of the world has these particular trees. In the south, likewise. Do they have trees to celebrate Christmas? So here, the word "likewise" simply means in the same way or in a similar way. So I could say, "I love celebrating Christmas." Likewise, so does my sister. In other words, my sister loves celebrating Christmas as well. So here we've got the word "embody." A part of this word is the word "body" itself, 
and basically just means it contains this within itself. Okay, it、uh, basically gives us the spirit of something. So yes, they embody the holiday spirit. They contain it. They represent it. And of course, they like to have Christmas trees down south as well in the southern hemisphere. But well, they can't use those conifers, or at least they. Prefer not to use conifers. Conifer is a general term for pine trees, or spruce trees, or fir trees. Those trees that have cones in them.、Uh, you've heard of pine cones, and then the leaves are like little needles. Okay, so they don't use those trees as Christmas trees down in the southern part of the world. Other types of tree are used instead. For instance, New Zealanders consider the Pahota Kawa tree, with its flaming red blossoms and pointy petals, as their Christmas tree. So yeah, go on to Google and write this word in there, and you get the idea what these trees look like. Right. We wouldn't immediately think of the Pahota Kawa tree if you look at it on the internet, a picture of it, as a Christmas tree. However. It does resemble a little bit traditional Northern Hemisphere Christmas tree because it's red. It has flaming red blossoms and pointy petals. And here, the word "blossom" simply means the flowers on a tree. Here, it's being used as a countable noun, but it can also be used as an uncountable noun and refer to the blossom of a tree. Right, especially I think it's February or so. You can go out to various places in Taiwan and see cherry blossoms. Or even plum blossoms. So yes, these are red blossoms, but they are flaming. They're like the color of flames or fire. And then the petals are not round; they're pointy. Petals are the part of the flower that、uh, kind of stick out from the middle. They're usually kind of round, and there's several of them in a circle. And these are pointy and not round. And that's what they like to use as their Christmas tree down there in New Zealand. And here it goes on to say, found mainly on the North Island, the Pahota Kawa is often featured on Christmas cards and has been described as having a scent of oranges. Hmm, that might be an interesting smell indeed. So yes, as you know, New Zealand has two main islands: North Island and South Island. So these kinds of trees are found mostly on the North Island. And so, because they like this tree so much in New Zealand, they feature it on Christmas cards, maybe even on postage stamps. Right. So we have a difference here between the north and the south. In the north, we have conifer trees that are used for Christmas trees. In the south, we have the Pahotakawa tree, which is very different. It has、uh, red flowers, red blossoms, and pointy petals, and、uh, they even have different smells. The Pahotakawa tree smells like an orange, whereas The northern conifer trees smell like pine. Indeed, and of course, here in Taiwan, it's、uh, just hanmafan, a big hassle to bring a Christmas tree inside your house. So we bought an artificial Christmas tree at IKEA many years ago, and we just pull it out of the box every year and celebrate Christmas with that. It's perfectly fine. It's easy to take care of, and it puts us all in the Christmas spirit.、Uh, what kind of tree do you use for Christmas here in、uh, Taiwan, Helen? I'm just like you, Roger. I got a plastic tree from a shop because it's not easy to get a real tree, and I set it up every year. However, the difference is I make fresh ornaments, fresh decorations for the tree each year. So I will take. Scissor and paper and popcorn and make new ornaments for the tree so that I don't always end up with the same tree. <laughs> wow, that's、uh, quite a lot of effort there. But we always use the same decorations every year and the Christmas lights, which of course are readily available in stores here in Taiwan island wide. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点课文第二部分提到，在北美洲以及欧洲部分地区，圣诞节最重要的部分就是圣诞树，那通常是松树、云杉或是冷杉。读到下一句，他说 ，Freshly cut and placed in the home, they symbolize Christmas not only for their appearance. 
but also for their piney scent. 好，这边的这个 they 指的就是前一句说到的 a pine, spruce, or fir, 松树、云杉或是冷杉。那我们看到，哎，这个句子它里面怎么没有连接词？然后前半句 freshly cut and placed， 它是用分词去开头的，所以就可以判断这边它使用了分词构句的用法。好，那它其实就是由 they are freshly cut and placed in the home, and they symbolize Christmas. 怎么样？怎么样？那因为前后两个子句的主词一样，我们其实可以省略连接词 and， 再省略其中一个主词，然后把那个被省略主词它后方的那个动词改成分词形式，就会变成分词构句了。如果动词是主动或进行中，现在分词 v i n g。被动就用过去分词 P P。好像我们课文里面，它就省略了前半句的主词 they， 省略连接词。那动词部分呢 ，are freshly cut and placed， 它是被动语态，所以只要保留过去分词，就会简化成 freshly cut and placed。好，我们再来看到句子里面，它有用到 not only but also， 这是表达说不仅怎么样还怎么样，不但怎么样，而且怎么样。它是配对连接词，必须用来连接两个词性相同的字词。像课文里面的 not only for their appearance but also for their piney scent， 这就是连接的两个介系词片语。好，那我们来造个句子。Potatoes are not only rich in vitamins and minerals, but also high in fiber and protein. 马铃薯不但富含维他命和矿物质，也富含纤维和蛋白质。好，假设我们如果是要用 not only but also 去连接两个子句，那这时候就不能直接用 not only 子句 but also 子句这样来连接哦，因为 not only 摆在句首的时候，它连接的子句要倒装，也就是呢。要把 be 动词或者是助动词移到主词的前面，就会形成 not only be 动词加主词，或者是 not only 助动词加主词加动词的句型结构了。好，至于 but also 在连接子句的时候 ，but 和 also 可以择一省略。如果要保留 also， 那它摆在 be 动词之后或是一般动词之前，所以它的句型结构是 but 主词加上 also 加动词，或者是。But 主词加 be 动词加 also， 那记得 but 跟 also 是可以择一省略的。例如 ，Not only did he eat the whole pizza， but he also ate the rest of the cake。他不仅吃了整个披萨，还把剩下的蛋糕都吃掉了。那这边 but he also ate the rest of the cake， 我们一样 but also 都可以择一省略。以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Slay。Santa Claus's sleigh is said to be pulled by eight reindeer. Frost. When I woke up early this morning, the ground was covered in frost. Likewise, I'm getting ready to leave, and I suggest you do likewise. Blossom. Many people visit Japan to see the blossoms on the trees. Petal. The bride was showered with rose petals. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.